I guess like like you should have you should strive to have the right opinion regardless of circumstances, but none of us are perfect. And you'd be surprised how many people out there don't necessarily disagree with like progressive ideas in terms of like, you know, labor or pay or like gender equality, things like that. But there's this knee jerk reaction that they're like, everybody outside of this fucking bubble that I'm in thinks I'm fucking stupid. They think I'm backwards. They think I'm a moron and they think they know it's best for me. And so I'm going to dig in and these public discussions yeah. and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying it's right or it fucking absolves them or, or anything, but it's, it is weird that once you start the dialogue, you get to talk to people, you'd be surprised how much you actually agree on versus how much you're digging in when there's like this level of disrespect. And welcome to Tyler is Gross, a podcast where a comedian talks to successful friends about life and betterment and self-improvement and growth so that I can destroy them in whatever game they're playing. And we got a destroyer right now, okay? We got Pat Soroy's, man. He's an old friend. He, uh, he's, a, he's a comedian in Austin, just like me. We met. Uh, he's, he's, we, we have a lot in common from the jump. We both were doing comedy, number one. Both freestyle rappers, number two. I mean, I'm retired now, but if you ask me, <laughs> I would do it. Both freestyle rappers. We both, ha- at one point in time, had freestyle rap duos. I was in something called Run the Fools, which we had a podcast called Off the Dome, the Austin Freestyle Podcast. We don't do it anymore, but it, we had an episode with Pat Soroy's years ago, and now we got this episode with him now. He's, in a, he's, he's doing all sorts of shit. There's so much stuff to learn from Pat, and that's why I was so happy to have him on. He had Vanilla Presley, his two white boy uh, f- comedy rap troop that he had, his comedy rap group that he had. Troop is for improv, and it, he'd probably find it uh, 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 morally offensive to even call him a troop. It's a group, and they're real rappers. He has a podcast called Lie, Cheat, and Steal. It's a whole, it's like a true crime podcast, but it's about liars, cheaters, scammers, thieves, stuff like that. I listened to it. It was really good. He has another podcast called uh, Good at Plants, Bad at Life, where he talks to a horror culturist, culturalist. Listen. If I can't, I can't say it, but you're going to love it. So check that out. And then he also has stand-up dates. He's going all over the place, all over the country. Uh, and you can check him out. Go on his Twitter, PZTX is his Twitter. Um, he's got a lot of stuff going on. And he's a great guy to talk to. He's been in the game for a lot longer than me. I've always looked up to him. Not, not so much a comedy big brother, but like a comedy cousin. Because like you see him every once in a while, and we always get along. And I'm always like, what are you doing? And he's, he's always just an exciting person to talk to. And he just, dude, he just gets right into it. Like he just, I say like, what's up? And he's like, well, I started, started comedy years ago. Like he just starts, and it's fantastic. Um, so check it out. I hope you like it. All 44, count them, 44 of my subscribers. You know who else is 44? Barack Obama. So I don't know what that means, but I'm excited to have 44 people subscribing. What a fucking pleasure. Thank you so much. More people coming on in. Thank you to the old people. You got to keep the, you know, make new ones, keep the old. Some are, some are silver, some are gold. So I'm happy that everyone's paying attention. And I'm happy that this feel, feels like growth is happening with the pod. Go ahead and like it and subscribe it and comment it so the algorithm loves me. I'll have a pinned post down below. Do the goddamn thing. I have a Patreon with no content on there. There's nothing extra on there but i have my my girl subscribed and my best friend subscribed so if you want to be either my girl or my best friend go ahead and subscribe and there's i also put a donut donate button on there if you just want a one time like bro that was some good ass shit keep it up there's a donate button uh it's all there so look for it check it out i love you you love me we are a happy family and please check out pastor royce he's a great guy and he's a funnier comic so check it out thanks y'all I was like, well, fuck it, whatever. I'm just doing a podcast. You're like, oh, hey, it's a video podcast. See, that's the thing. I already got in trouble. I already got in trouble is the thing. I already, yeah. I, uh, it was a girl too. A girl came through. And yeah. she, was like, she was like, Tyler, it's Saturday. I didn't. I, I didn't wear any makeup. This is just yeah. like some shit I threw on. Like, what the hell? And I was like, 
I'm sorry, you're unprepared for yeah, the yeah, right. modern world of <laughs> entertainment. Yeah, you just do like the fucking the classic guy response, like, "Oh no, shit, you look fine to me, girl." You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, did I, what did I say? I said, uh, I said, I said, well, you know, your clothes look good, even though your face all busted. It's okay. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Love it. Oh yeah, you know what I was thinking before you came? I was like. I feel like we're going to end up drinking a beer together. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, there's something about today, and yeah. I would like a beer, <laughs> and it seems like the right vibe and the yeah. right feeling, I think. Yeah, I was uh, I, 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 I um, was supposed to, I don't know if we're recording, I was supposed to come into possession of no, weed. No, we're, we're on it now. We're okay, I was, supposed to, <laughs> to, 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 uh, I was supposed to come into possession of weed on you know, the way over here, and I had to wait, and so I was just like driving, and it was like one of those things where like, you don't realize that maybe you're addicted until you're driving. <laughs> I was just like, man, I gotta go fucking be in public right now. I was like, <laughs> and then you're like texting and driving like, hey, Tyler, man, you got any yeah, bud, yeah. man? Please, you got, you got something for me, man? Anything, man, I'm, come on. Dude. I appreciate you having me on, but like, yeah. <laughs> but come on, man, you expect me to do this sober? Like, come on. For sure, man, but nah, man, I'm fucking, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a good day, dude. I, I started off the day, it's, it's like relatively kind of a self-help podcast. Uh, you know that's the that's the that's the marketing yeah, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's the, the premise is, or I think I said the premise, but it's you know it's like I'm trying to get advice from my successful okay. friends on yeah. um, self improvement and bettering yourself, nice, so nice. that I can crush you yeah. when <laughs> we inevitably face each other yeah. in the world. So I'm, so I'm like, let me just learn from the best, so yeah, that yeah, I can yeah. stab you in your back. That's yeah, I, I love that, man. I I have a so that, that reminded me of another thing. I'm all like self like weaponized self help. Uh, cause it, cause, uh, cause, okay. So you're the, yeah, you're the first comic that I've had on. That's what the game is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, We're yeah. all kind of like, oh man, congratulations. How'd you get that shit? Yeah. How'd you and get who, that shit? And who I gotta talk to? Yeah. 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 And yeah. Why'd they pick you over me, motherfucker? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah it's that's, all very That's spite all filled. the subtext of it. Yeah. And I feel like you can't actually ask people those questions and like, you know, everyone's yeah. taking shots and you're like, so can you like help me with my, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. let's make a podcast. Yeah, you dude. can sell my couch, have some sours. Yep. Yeah. Some sours, bro. Some sour dogs. Um, yeah, it's been a, <laughs> I, I, so recently a good friend of mine and I, I doubt he'll watch this cause he doesn't really like consume anything artistic. But oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, my numbers are going up. Okay. Yeah. It'll, re just, it'll reach. So he, uh, he is, is a good friend of mine. I, I was in a band with him when I was younger and now he is like he's getting out of the military, but he's like he's start he's doing like a thing right now where he, he him and his friends started a a supercar rental business. So they're like okay. where they rent like F ones and shit to people. Okay. So like wild ass shit. Well, he calls me and he wants to start a podcast uh, because he was like he basically got into meditation, right? And he was like, but dude, I'm not talking about no foo foo shit, okay? He's like, I'm talking about like we're gonna have these meditation centers, dude. We're we're creating super soldiers, bro. He's like, I'm talking about like tuning the human body to the fucking max, bro, and get it out there. And I was just like, did you yeah, really just did that, you that's, just that's miss what the Buddha yeah. wanted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, I was like, man, I'm not even like, I am the farthest from like spiritual in touch with just about anything. But I was like, you are wildly missing the point That's on so all of those funny. teachings. That's so well, you know, I mean, I, he wouldn't be the first. I've heard, yeah. I've heard stories because, like, you know, where where Buddha, Buddhism in the world is like the main religion. Yeah, it's, you know, it just sucks how anything can be corrupted. Because I've heard stories of like. I don't know, Cambodia or some shit, wherever they got Buddhism is the thing. They started training their soldiers, you know, like, because Buddhism's all about, like, like desire is the source of suffering. You want yeah. one thing, you get it. You want the next thing. You're constantly longing. And if you just let go of desire, then you can just be in the moment, be at peace, nirvana, mama say, mama say, mama say. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> so that's the idea. And then there was like governments, of course, that would get into power and they'd be like, all right, we need to have a genocide because that, uh, that happens. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, well, hey, everybody, I know you're killing lots of kids and women, but detach, baby. Yeah, no yeah, desire. Yeah, yeah. Your suffering yeah. comes from the desire to not murder. <laughs> yeah, and if right. If you let go of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Never, never mind, guy, never mind the know? desire to murder. Like, we're just going to leave that. We're not even going to address that yet. Yeah, it is. I remember I used to work at the pawn shop and uh, I'm not. Um, I've never been accused of being overly familiar with the tenets of Buddhism, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, I mean, more power to him. I just, you know, I'm not, I, people don't come to me uh, for that, for that advice. But uh, we used to get a lot of like very like decorative and expensive Buddha pendants in at the pawn shop. Okay. And it was like, and That's I, and, and like my buddy who like was like a little bit of a practicing Buddhist came in one day and he's laughing. He's like, well, like, like materialism is like, you know, like one of the, the main, um, 
things that Buddhism kind of preaches against. And he's like, and you guys have like a $400 jade diamond yeah. encrusted Buddha pen. And I was like, well, yeah, I guess we do. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I like Buddhism. I read, yeah. a bu- I read one book in college and I was like sold. It was, yeah, like yeah. 90, it was 90 pages and I'm like, I get Ooh, it. Hey, that's a good little introduction. I it like was, that. It, I mean, the book was called What the Buddha Taught. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's what I really want to know. I don't, yeah, want, yeah, I don't yeah. want any other bullshit. So I read that book and I was into it and I like spirituality and all that stuff. But it's tough being in America and doing what we do, yeah. wanting success and more stage time and more yeah. clout and respect, but also trying to be centered and, you know, be at peace with what you have. How yeah. Do you, how do you how do you handle that? <laughs> I, I um, What do you do, Pat? Well, what I did was I... I, I smoked I, that weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, just, I, I just get real tree. stoned. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, a long time ago, I did the smart move of painting myself into a corner emotionally to where I only okay. validated myself based off my achievements in this field. Right. And that made for a tough few years. Uh, but now things are going better, so it worked wait, out. Wait, well, tell me, when, when, how long ago was this? So basically, when I started, man, like I've been, um, I've been chasing down this dream or something like it right. for pretty much uh, since my like my teens into my adult life. Okay, uh, it started off I was gonna be a rapper, uh, right. then I was in a, a hardcore band. Uh, I was a screamer in a hardcore band for like five years while I was rapping, and uh, I was like, oh, this this is it. Like I'm I. I'm going to be the one that convinces the masses to listen to, yeah. you know, like, like, like we're going to get the mainstream kinda, success. I bet you every single niche genre of music is always like, I know no one else is broken through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to, we're going to be the ones. Baby yeah. screams over drums, yeah. but I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> I'm going to bring bagpipe core <laughs> to the front of the musical, uh, musical world. No, but like, I would chase this shit down. So it pretty much like, for, for me, it was just, it was like, I, I guess I, I was a little lucky because I kind of always knew kind of what I wanted. And I have friends who are very, like, you know, doing well. They have families. They have houses. They, uh, you know, have good jobs, health insurance, the whole nine. And, like, I've gotten, like, into deep conversations with them. And they've been like, man, it kind of sucks because I don't really know what I want. I'm like, well, you got everything that right. I think you would want. And it, it, there's, I'm not saying everybody I know. I'm not like one of these things where I'm like, oh no, I'm doing great. All my friends with houses, they're the ones yeah. who are fucking up. Like, not making no. They're, they're spiritually poor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, can I get another beer? <laughs> <laughs> I already drank the first one. No. But yeah, like, I, so like, I, I do know. Though. <laughs> Yeah, but they're so bad off. Anyways, I can't function without this. But uh, no, but like, but like, I, I know that like, I've always had this like like this goal of what I want to do, and it's just like to live, to make enough money to live off of inter- entertainment, like, and, and, yeah. it, and it's something that like it was it was very hard for a long time, and it just recently I, I would say it started being easy, but just recently started paying off. Last right. two years, I've been like. I've had like little jobs here and there, but now I'm just completely full time. I live off my podcasts yeah. and my touring money. And how and how long did that take? Because they the, the rule of thumb in comedy is ten years before anyone even gives a shit about you. I would say it was, that, it was just it was just about at ten years because I've been doing it about thirteen years. Yeah, and it was about three years ago I started to where like I I started being like super incompatible with the uh, working world. I started I started like getting fired, which I, I used to never get fired when I was younger. I'd always like at yeah. least. At, at, at the end of the day, I'd hold my job down. I started getting fired. I started like not giving a shit. I started seeking out jobs where it was like, okay, I'll have free time to go do comedy. Right. Whereas right. like earlier right. in my twenties, yeah. I was like, <clears throat> it was like, yo, I need sales jobs. Catch the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need, I, yeah, I need like sales jobs. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> I, like, I need. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I need to be like making money. I need to have. You know, at the time I had a girlfriend and she had two kids. They weren't mine, but I was like, you know, I was like, all, I, I was expected to be a little established. How old were you? Shit, man! I was like, you're like 22, 26. Like, I was like, now I was like 26. Still too to like, young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, man, I got these kids to take. Yeah, care 26. Of, like, it wasn't like 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 she was like like I wasn't like the like, like sole financial provider for these kids, but but you wanted to get them skittles or yeah, something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was in a world have... where I was expected to be like to have like a little bit of my shit together. Yeah, and um, that was like that was honestly, if you want to talk about like some like mentally taxing shit. That was probably the most difficult period of my fucking life, man. It was like walking those two roads where I was like, I still want to do this comedy thing. So like yeah. all of my all of my free time was going to that. But I also I, I couldn't be broke because I had a chick that had kids. I had, right. you know, like her family, like I don't want to get looked at all funny. So I had to have fucking a job where I was, you know, hustling and making money and getting checks. Yeah. And it was just and then like I also had to like be like present for that lifestyle. And like it was just so fucking hard. Yeah. And it wasn't until like me and her split. 
uh, we broke up and like literally I, we broke up and I lost my job in the same day. Um, now, <laughs> simps would say that's a bad day, <laughs> but like when you're well, when, I, when you're elevated, <laughs> <laughs> when you're an elevated. And by thinker, that I mean when you when you got that cushion on yeah, you, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it just rolls yeah, off your yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I want to say right here, I love how quickly you're just jumping in yeah, you're yeah. just straight up you're like oh this self-improvement well when i was 26 man yeah. my lowest point in my life and it's even like i i've written down a bunch of thoughts and questions and things that i would hope to talk to you about and you're already hitting on yeah. so much of it and yeah, it's so, like yeah. man this is so fucking exciting so you're at yeah. the so you're at your lowest point in your life you're 26 yeah. you lost your girl you lost your kids yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I lost her kids I was like, and, and some might say i gained no kids you know yeah, right. <laughs> but like no, yeah, I, I got I I, and that was when I was able to like just really be like, okay, what do you want? What do I want? Yeah, and so I got a job. That's, that I think that's what a lot of people nowadays had with COVID. I know yeah. so many of my friends. And to be fair, COVID happened. I mean, I'm 29, so we, it was like 20. It was 27 when it started yeah. popping off. That's right around that age when you're like entering into your late 20s, and you're yeah. like, all right, man. What's really going on? Exactly. And COVID gave a lot of people my age the opportunity to pause yeah. and look at their life and be like, wait, what have we been doing and why have we been doing it? Who told us to do this shit? Yeah. And is this even what I really want to be doing? Yeah. And these ain't even my kids. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. What are y'all doing? I dodged <laughs> that. Bull- so me, me, and my, me and my ex broke up. Um, like in, it was September first, twenty nineteen. I remember that specifically because it was the morning after I had a show. There was a la- it was the last day of August, and I, I, I got home way too late. Some might say the next morning, and like, I just like walked up and I was just like, "Where were you?" And I was like, "Ah, that did the show." And that was that. It ended right. Three months later or four months later, I fucking I go on my first long tour I've ever been on. Like I yeah. was like I did nineteen shows, nineteen days, seven states. That's great. Didn't have to check in with anybody. Didn't have to worry about asking like, "Hey, it's gonna be cool if I take off and leave you, you know, stuck with the kids." I, I could just go and do it. Got back March first when twenty twenty when the fucking world started like right. really catching on to this COVID shit, and then I was like. And then everything. You say it like I was ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah, I was ahead of the game, bro. I was out there on the road. I was out there seeing coughing the- on people. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing. I was out seeing that shit percolate. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I was seeing it simmer out in the Midwest. I was like, look at this. Look at this disgusting <laughs> cesspool. But uh, so, I, so I get back. Everything's like like COVID has, has officially popped off. And then like uh, I was thinking, shit. If I would have stuck out that relationship four months longer, I would have been stuck quarantining Dude. back home in Colleen with my ex and her two kids. I would have sacrificed another year of my fucking life. Ooh, I get the fucking yeah. heebie-jeebies thinking about it. Yeah, But it gave you a chance of perspective. At this point, the, the perspective it allowed me to have was like, I was like just starting to like, I was making money off my podcast. I was just starting to like go on the road. And then like, but I was like still very much entrenched in this comedy shit and right. had been for a few years. It gave me the ability because all I did during the, the the COVID break was I worked construction. Yeah. So I was like, I went back to work construction. I was single. I was just like getting off work, and then we couldn't do shit. Everything was shut yeah. down. So I was getting off work and just drinking beer at the end of the day in, in my construction boots. And I was like, damn, it's almost like I'm from Colleen, Texas, or some shit. Yeah, dude, <laughs> and that that happened to me during during COVID too. Because the thing the thing is, we're comics, and we like a lot of our identity and a lot of just like our. You know, like comedy fucks up your circadian rhythms. You yeah, know, like yeah, when it's yeah. seven o'clock, I'm like, why am I not outside and drinking? Right yeah, now? Like, yeah, why, yeah. why am I inside? Like, I'm with my girl, we cozy, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. this don't feel right. <laughs> why aren't you laughing right now? Yeah, right, right, yeah. Like, it, it fucks if you get you used to going out so much. And um and then COVID happened, it stopped. And I remember I was I was in Amsterdam and then I moved back I right that. before yeah. 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 I like was in Amsterdam right before COVID and I get back, I'm moving with my girl, and then COVID hits and I didn't ha- I didn't have a job lined up. I just came yeah. back. My plan was to just like drive Uber Eats and see yeah, what happened. Yeah. So I'm just driving Uber Eats for six months and I'm like I, I came from Amsterdam being a full time yeah. comedian. <laughs> now I'm just an Uber driver. Yeah. <laughs> living with my girlfriend. <laughs> Like she's working remote in the yeah, corner, yeah. and I'm like watching anime and eating <laughs> frosted flakes. Yeah, dude. And she's like, "You good, baby?" I'm like, mm-hmm, I'm good. <laughs> "Like I feel, I'm I felt, good. I felt <laughs> like a piece of shit. I yeah. felt like a child. I yeah, felt terrible." And um, and yeah, that's what COVID. Dude, yeah, it was what it, COVID did to us. Yeah, it was crazy. I I ended up uh, I ended up quarantining. I was supposed to be back for. I was supposed to be back in town for six weeks. I got back on March 1st. I was supposed to be back out on the road in, in the middle of April. 
and I was going to go out. I was going to be road homeless. I didn't renew my lease. Okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I didn't renew yeah. my lease. I've, I got I've on, heard about this. I've never yeah, done this. I've yeah, yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to, I was like, I want to go out the road and I'm just going to fucking sleep in hotels for the entirety of the summer because I, I just got a booker that was like paying for everything. Yeah. And I was like, cool, I'll just go out and fucking, you know, just be homeless on the road and figure this shit out. Yeah. So I hit up the Austin comedy community, which like, um, well, that's one thing about like, make, like, that people who don't do comedy don't know is one of the biggest helps is your scene and your yeah. community. Like motherfuckers really will stick their neck out for you. And so like, I, I hit her, I just put out there was like, yo, I just need a place to stay for six weeks. Our boy JT Kelly was like, JT? yo, I don't, I don't sleep in my room at all ever. He's like, so you can just have it. I sleep in my girlfriend's house. Just stay there for six weeks. And I get there and that's like, March 3rd. And it's like, fucking <laughs> like and I, all the emails start rolling in. They're like, hey, venue's closing down, venue's yeah. shutting down. And I was like, okay, okay, things are taking a much different turn. And I ended up staying there for six months. So in this six months, w- when did you hit the point of analyzing like, okay, I'm, I've, my self-esteem has been wrapped up in my accomplishments. Yeah. And now... What am, what am I really doing? It, it was probably when... Okay, so at first I had a job. At first I was uh, I was cooking at, uh, quality seafood. Yeah. And I was like... And then like that started slowing down. And that was a mind fuck because like, it was like completely slow. Like, I remember like early, like first week of COVID. There was no business in there. I don't know if you've ever been in quality seafood. They haven't really rearranged, redecorated since the 90s. So it's no, like a seafood that. restaurant that has like, you know, what you would expect. Like like fishing nets on the wall and like little like, captain wheels and all. You know, it, it looks it like, looks like, like a, it looks like Spongebob Squarepants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're in there, and there's no business, and they still have the mixtape playing that, that they usually play. It's all like Jimmy Buffett songs. Yeah. And so I'm walking over to get my like my iced tea refilled. There's not a customer in the store. All the lights are off to save energy, but they're still playing the wasted away again yeah. in Margaritaville. And I was like, man, this feels like some zombie horror shit. Like we like we like rescued a or we like took up refuge in a fucking seafood restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> it felt very strange. But so around that that I get laid off there, and then it's just like I got. Nothing but like at this point, the podcast was probably making me like it was probably barely covering my rent. Was like yeah. when I was getting off my podcast, and then I was just like, okay, well, shit. I mean, I got to do something. And then out of nowhere, a guy I know was like, hey, I need a I need a carpenter. I heard he has some carpentry experience. I was like, yeah, I do. And I started working, and that was when I was like, it just gave me a chance to like I I didn't know when shit was coming back. None of us did, right? So I'm I told this cat I was like, dude, you've got a year of my undivided attention, and I just do- I dove in and started like. Working like just building that's, houses, trying to secure jobs. That's for- great. You embraced it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like some. I, I I know comic friends who are like. I, don't, I mean, I don't really know their financial situations, but I'm yeah. like, it <laughs> seems precarious. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 I know. I, and he just he did, he doesn't want to get a job. Yeah. Because it's like that's a that's a failure. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a comedian. With a job? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And you just took this moment to be like, fuck it, man. Like, yeah, yeah. dude. Well, what well, helped me out was... Gonna, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Like, let's just be a human being. Let's yeah. be a human first and then a comic second. Dude, it, that's exactly... And yeah. I was, that was what I needed. Because I was like... At this point, that hit... I was probably like 11 years in. And like... I've been doing, again, breakneck pace since since my first open mic. Since I, my first open so mic... This was a hard stop. Yeah, this was a hard stop. Because my first open mic was like every decision I made in my adult life where I moved, what job I had, what yep. I, you know, what, what shift I took, all of that was in service to this shit. Yep. And I, and I didn't realize how much I needed everything to come to a grinding halt. And I was glad it came to a grinding halt the way it did because like, I remember thinking, I was like, man, how bad would this be if I was the only one that had to stop doing comedy? I used to think about that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, it was my inner hater. Maybe I was like, I was like, I would have had a huge problem if I had to stop. But everybody had oh, to stop. Yeah. I mean, that was the that, that was that was the thing that was the calming that was like the, that, that, the, the <laughs> salve of the whole thing. Yeah. It's just like, well, I mean, can't do shit. It's yeah. not like no every, everyone else is grinding without yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that but was then, what I was then, always scared about. And then it yeah. turns out they were they were go, they were they were finding <laughs> venues. They were going out. Yeah, height of COVID, they were like. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, dude, I, the, I've been... The worst comics telling the shittiest the worst, jokes dude. and killing as many people as I can. Yeah, the, the, the worst, dude, so true, the worst comics, shittiest jokes, and, and if any of y'all are listening, even if I'm, I'm friends with some of y'all, but y'all wild the <laughs> fuck out during COVID. I remember, dude, there was, like, some comic in L.A., I don't even remember the guy's name, but, like, this whole thing where they try to paint themselves as, like, fucking heroic somehow, and it was, like, this dude made a little, like, some fucking video, it was, like, he was this fucking, like, I forget, I, I don't know the comic of the day, but he had this, like, kind of nerdy-ass bitch voice, and he was, like, uh, in July, in March 2020, everything stopped. And he goes, and it like cuts like a, a rooftop comedy show. He goes, but we didn't. It's like all the music, music <laughs> drops. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Comedy! Yeah, yeah. I can't stop, stop, stop. 
<laughs> it was just like it was the worst fucking, and it was like really made themselves look this like show they were goes like out to Dylan. Dylan, we miss you. <laughs> yeah. We're sorry that you passed away from the virus. Yeah, but. from the coronavirus. And it was a dude. It was so fucking stupid. And I was like, that's what I don't want to be. I don't want to be yeah. this motherfucker. Because to me, that was like. That was like the, the 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 litmus test. It was like, are you still a human being, or are you this weird fucking? I'm only a comic, and yeah. that's all I am. And it was like, if you were out there doing fucking open mics in April 2020, like, yeah, you're one of those weirdos. Like, in yeah. my opinion, I'm sorry if if you. Yeah, I if, think so. Yeah, but like, I think that to, like two like especially like that's like two that's like a month or and a half two months in, <laughs> and it's like. You can take a break. Yeah, you can. T- <laughs> you can take a little break. Yeah, man. And it was like so. Like I, I, I embraced it, man. I fucking needed it. And like, I got off work. I was in the best fucking shape of my life. I was yeah. working on a roof in in Round Rock, Texas, all goddamn day. I was tan. I was in shape. Yeah, you know, like like I'd be like I, I like I've always been like a big dude, but like this was like the thinnest I'd ever been. I was fucking just had like I couldn't eat enough throughout the day. Was was there any point during this during COVID when you weren't doing stand up and comedy and you were doing construction like I was doing Uber Eats and there's this thing of like I mean I could I could just do this. You know what I mean? Dude, I, I was I was kind of into it, man. I, I was like, like, like I like at some point I was like I don't even miss going on stage really. Yeah. I, I like I love I kept writing. I love writing. And I was I made little, I made sketches and put them on Instagram yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But it was like I mean, you know, yeah. like th- th- there's other stuff you can do. It yeah, dude, I, I I met my I, I I well I didn't met her. We already knew each other, but I started dating my girlfriend who Hell I'm still yeah. with. Yeah, and like and that was hey, fucking shout out Pat's girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out Sid. But she, yeah, she's and she's the fucking best man. But like it was cool because she knew I was a comedian mm-hmm. and she knew I was like. She she knew like what I had it, it was, like it sounds weird for your ego but she knew what I had done like we, we knew each other she knew that I was like going on the road that I had a podcast to make money that was cool so like but like I couldn't do anything I, I couldn't do actually do comedy and it gave us a chance to just like get to know each other without outside the lens of me being a comic which is such an overpowering thing in your life that like you like like you you're, like now that it's back you know I'll notice sometimes we're like you know Sid's just like hey can we just like pump the brakes and just us hang out tonight and not go to a comedy show or not go to a comedy thing yeah. and I'm like oh yeah 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 it's so hard to realize how fucking overpowering of like a, a feature Did that is in someone's life with you? oh yeah 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 I sure mean like go. my girl now like she goes to some stuff with me but yeah. but mostly it's like you know it's like if I'm I, I want to hang out with her yeah, I don't want to bring her to comics, and then I got to split my personality between. Yeah, it, it, it's it, what, what I always I gotta is, in secret be like, "Hey, baby, how you yeah. doing?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, I gotta go, and they're like, "What's up, yeah, dog?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, what I've always, you bitch! Yeah. Ah. It's like you said, the cutest yeah, baby angel in the back. world. You're it's the so sweetest, weird. cutest. And then you got no, no girlfriend at first when they first start dating. They're like, "Oh, it's so cool! I'm gonna go out to the comedy show and see this." And that only lasts like a month, and they yeah. see what it's actually like when you're at a show, and it's just like they're like i'm all set you can yeah, go to your I'm, show I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm half I'm, I'm i'm half ignoring you yeah and I'm, I'm 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 trying to be like cool to you but also i'm trying to like yeah i don't know network for lack of a better word but yeah like, you exactly know, you're just trying to be amongst the people yeah yeah just, just get, get you know get your face out there like and it's it's it's, it's you see how, how incompatible it is but at first it's a little sweet spot where they don't mind they come out to stuff she'll still come out to big stuff like when i like but I had the Vel for the weekend and shit. Like she came out to those nights and like, yeah. But like, but she's completely hundred percent over like going to check out me doing a fifteen minute spot in some place. Right. It was real cool to her at first, and like now it's like, so, but it, which is the natural progression. So it sounds it sounds like this COVID thing made you rethink things. Yeah, and, and you started dating your girl or yep. really hanging out with your girl. Yeah, this was this this feels like a turning point turning point in the Pat Soroy story. It was man, it really was. <laughs> it, it really was, and it was also it was cool that I had a girlfriend who didn't have kids like. <laughs> Your bar is so low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you'll see how, like, how... Um, Yo, dog, she just got roommates, dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. They pay their way. So tight, I don't, don't got to pay for the shit for them. <laughs> but, like, you'll see, like, rightfully so, if a person has children, that should be their number one priority. And, like, the idea of, like, a fucking comedian boyfriend is just, like, just way less patience, you know, yeah. for, for your ass. It's another, but, it's another kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a third child. So, like... It was cool being in this like situation with somebody who like was like supportive and actually like you know could be supportive of my comedy shit while not being like well I actually got to worry about my kids you know it was like I so I, I was it was it was a turning point I got I had a, a a very cool very supportive girl uh, somebody who was like really encouraged me to like go out and do my thing when comedy started coming back and I'd be like I started getting like road gigs and I was like still working at the time I had I hadn't you know comedy wasn't back yet so I still had a job and she was the one that was like. 
I was like, fuck, I, I gotta go. They want me out for three weeks though. And that's like, I gotta take three weeks off work. She was like, fucking do it. Like, take, yeah. like, quit your stupid sandwich job. At this point, I was working at a sandwich shop. She was like, quit your fucking stupid sandwich job that was, you hate. Is that the construction job? No, 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 Were no. Were you this constructing is, I was constructing. Stubs? Yeah, by construction, I'm in sandwich <laughs> construction, dog. I was the best shape of my life. You know, yeah, I ate a bunch yeah. of sandwiches. I was on a roof. They're like, Pat, <laughs> make it downstairs in the building. And I was like, nah, y'all, I got to get up on this sandwich and make this. <laughs> no, so what happened with the, with the construction of sandwich leap, uh, the construction of sandwich pipeline <laughs> was... It's a, I, it's a classic pipeline. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's a classic yeah. Colleen pipeline. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get hurt doing construction, and then you just yeah. start making sandwiches. One day you're nailing in fucking shingles on a roof, <laughs> and the next day you're fucking you're you're making a BLT, and that's just that's just how it goes. <laughs> no, I was working for a guy, God bless him, who just ran the fucking company where we were working. We, we, uh, he, the company that hired me, he just ran it into the ground because he got COVID, had to take two weeks off the job site, um, and then like just lived off of the fucking money and like the, the, the like the money that people yeah. paid for their, the new wing of their house. He just lived off of it for like a month. And then when we got back to work, there was like just not enough money left to finish the job. And I found that out while I was under a porch digging a hole to pour concrete into in the middle of the fucking summer. And this dude called me. He was like, dude, abort mission, bro. He was trying to get him to cut him another check and they wouldn't. Because uh -huh. like, why would they? We were, you know, so like, I was like, oh, so I just don't have a job anymore. He's like, nope, sorry. And so I was like, well, shit. So I just kind of hung out and then I was like, well, I got to do something. So I went and got a job at Thundercloud Subs. And hey, <laughs> Thundercloud. Yeah, the official job of... Promo code GROSS. Yeah, yeah. At thundercloud.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, was, I was working there. And, like, I started... My, my booker was like, okay, things are popping again. I need you back out. And I was like, fuck, three weeks. You know, like, I, you know, I, I got to work. And, like, it was like... Because that's all I know. All I know is to work 40 fucking hours a week. It's like, I'm from Colleen. I like, that's, just, that's just my whole life. And my chick was like, no, just get the fuck back out there and do it. And it was like kind of like some cold water shit. I, I had to just like, all right. So I quit the job and just started going on the road. And it was like, and it was exactly what I needed. It was like, yeah. like I just, you know, next thing I know, I'm like, I, I, I can just take any run of shows I yeah. get. What's your, what's your relationship with comedy like now? Because you've been doing it for years. And, you know, like, because I'm at this place where I, where for a long time, I was just all about the art. Yeah. I'm like, let me be as good as possible. Let me be, let me write good jokes and, and, yeah. and have creative, interesting premises and, and, and fill it out. And, and I always had, a, I think, a naive belief where it was like, if I just do the best I can, then the world will reward me for that. Yeah. And I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I don't think that's actually how this game works. I don't think you're 100% off base, though. You know what I mean? I, I, I think it's, I think you have to be good. I think you should strive to be your best. Yeah. I think you have to be ultimately good enough for people to then want to invest in you. But even still, you have to do some investment in yourself. Yeah. So now I'm trying to I'm, at, I'm in this place where it's like what what is like as I'm growing and maturing, how is my relationship to comedy going to grow and mature, too? Because yeah. before it was all just like, I want to be an artist. And then now I'm like, OK, now I kind of have to be an entrepreneur, too. And yeah. how do you deal with that shift? Yeah. And, I, and, and what has been your experience shifting and growing and vibing with comedy as you've gone certainly, through certainly so i would say i stuck out for a very long time in that same boat where, with you where i was like i just want to get really good at this shit uh i have something I, I have like an aversion when i meet people who've been doing comedy for six months and it's like i feel like they're focusing more on the entrepreneurial side right. of it than the actual comedy part of it yeah. i think that to me that i'm not saying there aren't funny guys or, or funny comics who are like that but nine times out of ten if i meet somebody they're six months in and they're already like I don't think they, they, it, it feels like if like if you went to like a like a like a like a seventh grade basketball game. Yeah. And there was a kid there who was like, I think once I get my sponsorship with Nike. Yeah. That's when I'm, I'm going to create a shoe. And it's like, dog. Yeah. Just love the <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, just learn, yeah. Learn how to fucking just, shoot the ball. Like, even, for, just have a great time. Yeah. doing. You're a fucking kid. Yeah, man. Dude, that, There's that, no that, chance you're even going to get to that yeah. point. Have a good time now. And then it's adults and they're entrepreneurs and they want to yeah. do it. And I get it. They want fame. But like. It, it, it's you the know. quickest way to be hack, I think, is to is to immediately start chasing down the business yeah. aspect of it. I, I always tell comics all the time, like if I it, like I, I met a guy who was like, oh, he did his first show as the show was in San Antonio. It was his first show, and he was like. Uh, super excited to work with me and my boy Jared, which like shows how little he knew about comedy because he thought we were somehow like right. me and Jared Holly were like big names, you know? Oh, Jared Holly, where's, yeah. he, at? where's he at these days? Jared Holly's in Chicago doing fucking fantastic. Yeah, right? is yeah, he doing yeah. comedy stuff? He started running a monthly show with Courtney Peterson. Check okay, it out if you're, if you're in Chicago. Red Devil Comedy. It's in the basement of Red Devil Tattoo. It's like every third Saturday. 
But yeah, Jared's fucking killing it, man. Hell yeah. uh, I stay with him when I'm, whenever I'm in Chicago. Love that guy. But like, so this guy was excited to work with us, and he's like asking me, like, so how do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He's asking me these questions, and I was like, the telling point, him, that's the, which is the purpose of this podcast. Yeah, it's the purpose of this podcast. podcast. But I, I was telling him, I was like, dude, just like, like, kind of like this. I was like, learn how to write a joke, be in the scene, learn what comedy is, get comfortable, don't try to immediately monetize it. And his drunk uncle was there, and he was like, but like, when do we start making contracts to give the clubs? And I was like, bro, you're fucking a hundred percent missing the fucking point. And I think when you see a comic like that, who their first, their first fucking uh, focus is like, not necessarily how do I start getting booked? Cause that's important. But where it's like, they start trying to sell themselves as a brand right. and they're six months in. It's like, bro, you don't have a brand to sell. Like yeah. learn how to write a joke. That's or, the- or, or like, I feel like the per- purpose of my comedy is self-expression, self-actualization, yeah. getting what's in here out. And to get what's to get it out, you got to figure out what it is. Yeah. And so, like, part of comedy is, I mean, you know, me, I started at 22, so I was young. Yeah, so that's why I, so, I started the same age. Yeah. So it's like you have to spend years figuring out who you are and what it is and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you can start trying to pull that out and make it something good. And, like. Spend some time, like 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 what we were saying before. Be a human first. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Like, you gotta well, have a fucking. I remember there was a comic in town one time, and 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 because I I always did improv and stand up back yeah, yeah. next to each other, and I think people saw me uh, rise relatively quickly, yeah. and they were like, okay, maybe maybe improvs the the stand up <laughs> comedy yeah, yeah. secret. <laughs> You know, you do guys who do both, and I think guys interchangeably, but I mean, comics who do both uh, tend to be very fucking funny. And like, but like, it is so, it is funny. I've seen that misconception of like, oh, I'll do improv yeah, too. It's like, yeah, yeah. no, like you're you're kind of missing the point. Well, like, oh, so he asked me, he's like, so like, does improv help with like stand up and stuff? And I'm like, uh, maybe like indirectly. Yeah, like it helps you be creative and it helps you think and 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 be okay with failure and have fun. But more so, you just meet a lot of really cool people. Yeah, and 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 make a lot of really good connections with really nice people, and you have like a great time. And he was like, Nah, I just want to <laughs> be good at this shit though. Yeah, I just try to be like really yeah. good, and I'm yeah. like. You gotta have you gotta have that, but you gotta have everything else too. Like, yeah. be a full, well-rounded person while doing this. Yeah, thing. dude. Th- there has to be a thing like that. I noticed to making the jump from like so when I first my first entry into the the, the cr- creative endeavors was when I was a teenager. I was like, I'm gonna be a rapper. That was yeah. like, you know, I, uh, I listened to uh, your <coughs> I listened to your podcast last night, Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Hey, Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Check it out. Okay, yep. great. <laughs> About uh, liars, cheaters, stealers, and bullshitters. Yeah, like liars, that. frauds, thieves, and bullshitters. There you go. I, I listened to that. It was one about Henry Hill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were talking about Goodfellas, and I don't, I don't, I don't know the movie. But then after that, I wa- I listened to uh, your episode of Off the Dome, the Austin Freestyle. Oh podcast. yeah, yeah, dude. I, <laughs> dude, people find that one all the time. Like people from back home, like for whatever reason, that's like w- the like the one that people hit me up like, hey, I heard a podcast you're on. I'm like, oh, one of my podcasts. Like no, 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 no. <laughs> like, yeah, it's another dude, one. I listen to that shit. Number one, I mean, it's it was my podcast, me and Patrick Creamer's podcast. And I, a few years, uh, enough years have been away from it. Man, that was a great podcast, man. It was fun, man. I had <laughs> a blast fun. when I went there. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. listening to that shit. We was laughing. We was having yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we were, you know, I, I wasn't doing to be like, let me, let me see where, where we were last time and yeah, see yeah. whatever. But yeah, you were talking about trying to be a rapper. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, and yeah. Yeah. And so one, one thing I noticed that with that, that was like different and, 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 and I'll, I'll explain like the goods, the pros and cons of the, of the differences. Cause there's, there's so Initially, I remember when I was doing uh, state like rap is all about one thousand percent self confidence and one thousand percent belief that you're gonna make it, and and also one thousand percent selling yourself as a product, marketing yourself as a brand from Jump Street. There's really no shine in being like. Like every like one out of a hundred rappers can make that thing where it's like, yo, I don't give a shit and I don't care and I'm a fucking like, like Eminem when he popped up and he was like in the middle of the bling bling era, he was like, I'll staple my fucking nuts to my hand. I hate myself. <laughs> fuck my mom. Like it was like there was like a little bit of room for that. People like, OK, we'll get that. But more or less, you're trying to come up and rap. It's it's one thousand percent self-confidence, zero doubt. And you just got to sell yourself as this fucking machine. Yeah. And then I moved into comedy, especially Austin comedy, where it was yeah. like. Trying is kind of gay, dude. Like, <laughs> they're, like they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, anyone, yeah. anyone who's trying, anyone yeah. who's who's making an effort, that's kind of stupid. None of us care. None of us give a shit. And it's like, b- there's faults in both. There, but like, sure. I, and you got to learn to take like, like I love the comedy that disaffected nihilistic stoners create. I love, I love the the comedy created by people who don't give a shit and don't try. I think it's genius. Yeah. But 
I only see that comedy because I go to their shows. Nobody else is going to see it because they're not working to get yeah. it out there. At the same time. And I don't know. I feel like if, if I, I don't know. I feel like if you wanted to maintain that kind of you can market yourself and oh, you, I don't give a shit kind you of certainly, way. You certainly can't. Like, like you if, know? You're, if you're really living the lifestyle of behind the jokes and be like, I don't give a shit if this shit works or not. I mean, like that's that's I think a lot of people look up to Dave Attell and he is. The, yeah, he is the top. You know, I I've never really liked David Tell. Yeah, I, it's n- never really good for me. And I, Comedy nerd alert! I feel, <laughs> like, somebody in Vulcan Gas Company just shot up in their seat, like, oh my god! Brian Redburn kicks yeah, out yeah. the door. And like, Where is he? <laughs> How uh, dare you? I'm not gonna book yeah, you because yeah, I never have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen. That was Somebody's talking shit about the five guys we painted on our wall. Don't fucking live here. <laughs> <laughs> man, fuck that entire company. Oh, anyway. man, I, I still want to be booked, so they're not so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please book um, me. In. <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah. So I've never really cared for him. But he's the essential like New York comedy guy. Apparent, a legend. Yeah. Everyone. He has so many babies. You know, people who co- yeah, copy yeah, him. Yeah. And he just never cared about promoting or marketing himself. So yeah. he is he's the best, poorest comedian. That yeah. the, the, the quality to money ratio, I yeah. think, is the biggest divide. Yeah. You, and like, I think if you like David Tell, I think part of you probably thinks that's cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I want. And know, there's, I want yeah, there's points where you put like, here, here's where I looked at it is like, I, I kind of like I. I had a turning point. I was I was always marketing myself. I kind of tried to take the best of both worlds. I was like, I came from from rap and music where it's all about self promotion, and then I, I got into comedy, specifically uh, Austin comedy, and like in the kind of comedy that I like. I respect comics who are like who don't like I. I Nothing makes me matter than a comedian who's like, we're like the free speech fucking warriors, dude. I hate those types of comedians. I don't like people who take the shit too seriously. But I will say those guys do a hell of a better job at marketing themselves usually. And so it's like, I try to take the best of both worlds. You, you take like, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't be one of those people that gets caught up about like the art or like what, you know, like, 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 like when you're like, we talk about like that Natasha, what is it, Natasha Leggero or, or Whitney Cummings quote where she was like, comedians are like the people who take you through the scary haunted house ride that is the human mind. I hate that fucking outlook. Yeah, I don't, I, I, th- I, th- I think that is, uh, true of some comics yeah, or, or whatever. Like, I, I think that that's like what they do, but I don't think they're doing that. Um, like I, like I, I, t- I told a joke the other day that was about like killing women or something. And it was like <laughs> much more tasteful than it sounds, <laughs> but <laughs> Cheers, it was, an- it was anti, if it helps. I'm against it. <laughs> I'm, I don't care for it, but I did want to make some fun jokes about that. The thing that. about killing women is I don't like it. I okay. don't like it. And, but I did that joke, and I'm not doing that joke to be edgy. I, that just, the thought of it, not, of, there's a, like, of, of the, in the concept, that not just, the thought of killing women doesn't make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but the. You my, guys heard it here first. My, <laughs> t- my take on it really tickles me, and I'm like, yeah. I gotta try. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes me do it. So when I, so whenever I figure that joke out, and it's like a sort of edgy, killer, really good joke, it's, yeah. I'm not taking you to the dark place where yeah, to yeah. make you laugh in the face. I'm just like, no, I just thought it was really silly. Yeah, really yeah. funny and take on a dark topic and that, that's let me make it so, work. And then there you go. That's so important because like, like I when I always get mad, especially when people like talk about like, oh, well, why can't I? Like, like if I'm talking like a straight white comic who's like, well, why can't I tell a trans joke? I was like, why the fuck do you want to tell a trans joke? What do you have to say about that? And it kind of reminds me of, I call it writing prompt comedy, where it's like, I don't do anything about politics or really current events in my act. Because, like, I tend to write about something that actually makes me laugh and I think it's funny. Yeah. Like, you actually thought that angle of the joke was funny. Like, that's something I want to talk and I want to share with y'all something that made me laugh. And it's like, I don't think, like, when I see somebody doing a joke about, like, the trans debate and I'm like, unless they're a trans person I'm like what the fuck do you like you're clearly just going and yeah. seeing what's hot you're giving us a take that you probably don't really spiritually agree with yeah. or necessarily vibe with and you're just doing it so you can have a joke yeah. that fits into a current discussion that's having that's being had yeah. so you can look like you're on the edge and it, 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 I, like, I don't like, I, I hate that part it's yeah. like dude tell the jokes to make you laugh I, I remember during COVID obviously a lot of people had COVID jokes and I had a COVID joke too and 
uh, to pat myself on the back for the rest of this <laughs> for the rest of this thought. I think the difference between mine and their COVID jokes was their jokes were about COVID, yeah. and my jokes were about my experience with COVID. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's a big difference because I have um, I have this trans bit that I do, but it's not about trans people as much as it's about my mom doesn't get trans people. Yeah. So I am interacting with my mother yeah. about the topic of transness. So this is a real thing that I'm going through that I think a lot of other yeah people yeah are yeah, yeah dealing with their parents not being able to keep yeah. up with what's going on and that's what i'm talking about yeah and in that are my takes on trans yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. but it's not necessarily about them it's about me and and how they come into my world and how they affect my relationship between between me and my mom yeah and that's and that that's is, good comedy like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I i hope so yeah i hope so pat <laughs> well yeah that's what i remember Man, I go put this cat on blast, but uh, I did a show one time. I'm not gonna say the city because he's so associated with the city, but I did a show one time, and I ended up I I, I got into town to do this show, and the guy was like, "Hey, can you do my podcast?" And I was like, "Yeah, show sure, do your podcast." First question out the gate was Austin comedy. Why is it so clicky? And I was like, "Bro, I don't you don't live there. Let me clicky." I was like, "Like, like you know?" So then like that was kind of weird. Then it turned into like, "Well, how come you can't go to Austin and talk about trans people?" I was like, "Why do you want to?" It was a very strange kind of felt ambushed in this, in this podcast, right? I do the show. I end up crashing at this guy's place, and then, uh, you know, like he's like, so like, yeah, like, like, what is it about Austin? I, I can't tell these jokes, and we actually kind of got into a shouting match. And so finally, I said, okay, what's the joke? What's the joke that you just can't tell? He goes. Well, I don't have any trans jokes. I was like, so we just fucking had this imaginary yeah. joke, but it's like, yeah, like, but like the joke that like I, I I ended up seeing him do later, it was more of a thing. Like, I think the pot the, the punchline was something to the effect of like, oh, some guy chopped his dick off. I got to listen to that guy. That's the kind of joke you you write about trans trans people when you're not talking about your own experience when you're just telling the joke. Right. When you're just writing a when joke you're just like, to, to when check you the see box. see it and you're like, gross, let me write a joke about it. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, not yeah. Nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, especially, tell me about Especially Chappelle did it all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he really. Yeah, yeah. He's covered every angle uh, yeah, you, you can can't. cover about hateful trans <laughs> jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's really got the game sewed up, you know? <laughs> when it comes to being a hateful person towards trans people. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like, nobody wants to, like, I don't, like, I don't get up and, like, yeah, if I'm going to tell a, 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 a trans... Yeah, basically, if I'm going to talk about something, it has to, like, drift into my life experience for me to even be, like, interested in talking about it. Yeah. And I can tell when someone's writing a joke about something they did, they, they know nothing about and have no experience with. I can always spot that because the joke's usually bad. It's usually yeah. bad. It's usually a little distasteful. And it's like, it usually punches down because it's like you're talking about something that you have no fucking, yeah. like, depth in. You know, this is a thought I've had recently about scenes in general. Which is because because we have the old Austin scene. Yeah. Because you you you've been gone. Yeah. I don't know what the hell you've been up to. Yeah, you've been doing your podcast. You've been torn. You have. But I've been in the trenches. Yeah. Yeah. In respect all, <laughs> all all the comics I respect are still out there in these yeah. trenches. <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm going to the same shitty open mics now. I'm still doing it. And the thing is, so now there's the old scene, the scene that we know, and then there's this new scene of all the people who have come in and and, and Vulcan and kind of Creek and all the people that yeah. kind of hang out around there. And I've sort of been in those circles a little bit. And then, but I'm obviously more welcome in the, yeah, yeah. In the old scene. <laughs> and the thing I've thought about is like our scene, com to compare the scenes, there's a lot of differences. And I think the, the new scene is more of what you're talking about. Like yeah. white dude loud trying to do trans jokes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. really trans so much because I don't think they know what that means. I think it's more, I think it's more <laughs> like women and rape and shit like that, which isn't... Uh, some of it's fine. Yeah. Most of it's whatever. You know, yeah, dude, Not, I, dude, I, nothing's really like, you know, can't, nothing's like I want to, oh, I hate it. It's just yeah. like, all right, bro, if that's really what you want to be getting up there and saying. Dude, I did a fucking, I did a creek open mic a couple months ago, and I don't know who this chick was. I just know she was a, like, um, traditionally hot chick. Like, she was like, sure. she marked the boxes of being like, you're classically attractive. And, oh, she, and she, oh, and I'm sure she gets booked too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so sure she, she gets booked. She went up and like I swear to God, her fucking the first sentence out of her mouth just goes. So like I guess you can't be racist to black people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you, yeah, no, no, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And I think, th and and part of me wants to criticize the culture of the scene, which yeah. I think there are some valid criticisms. But ultimately, I think what it really is is this new scene is a new scene. Yeah, it's a young scene. Yeah, the scene that we came from is a more older, more mature scene. So we are more aware of like, oh fuck, like if there's a black dude out there in the audience, he may he or she may not like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Or like, yeah. or if like, if I say a rape joke, it's gonna turn a lot of women off. Yep. And even though my bros are laughing, yeah, that's not really gonna help. And then especially, you know, if if it's really your bros, yeah, 
and there are no women around to like yeah, tell yeah. you not to do that shit. And yeah. our scene, we just have it's a more diverse scene because we've been around longer. We've had conversations within the yeah, scene yeah. of inclusivity and of you know being aware of what what you're saying to other people. And and even so much so now, I feel that we've our scene, this old scene, has gotten so mature and also just better comics that like we're kind of i feel like we're kind of i feel like a few years ago if i would have did the killing woman joke people would have been like hey tyler you know like uh you know like do you but like i don't yeah. know and now people are coming up to me like all right you're almost there yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah you're almost there man you're so yeah. close like yeah. it, like like we now under now we're actually we've internalized the inclusivity so like we're kind of giving more leeway for yeah. good comics to try more edgy material. Dude, and I, I, and I think it, that's a perfect it's point. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's a very interesting thing I, to, to witness. I was at a love goat. Uh, to talk about the guy, like how, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was I at a love goat. goat. It's, like, it's like three or four years ago. piece of shit over Yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. Just the, and I, I was there and I was with my, there with my boy, Chris Tellez, and we were like, all my open mic stories lately have, in recent years have been me and Chris Tellez getting bored to be like, let's go see an open mic. Let's just see what the open mics are like right now. <laughs> And because uh, luckily, like we we don't have to do those all the time anymore, so it's 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 a blessing. But like this was like pre COVID, and uh, the person hosting it, uh, lovely host, but the guy went up, and he did um, to use his defense of the joke. It was a joke about rape. It wasn't necessarily a rape joke, but the guy did that. And then uh, the, the host goes up and was like, "I love these things. It's not about you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, it's about he, the idea. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, wouldn't it be funny if? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying I did it. I'm saying I think it's hilarious <laughs> when people do it. No, and, no. And, and, when, and, the, and those jokes, the crowd's always like, "Yeah, no, we get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we understood. We just don't fucking like it. Yeah. So he, he goes up and he does his thing and like you know, like like the dude was like. I, I haven't seen him before or since. I mean, he was definitely just giving comedy a sure. shot. You know, who knows what he knew? But he uh, he goes up, does that, and uh, the host goes up and was like, "Hey, just a reminder, don't do any rape jokes on the open mic." And then Tellus goes up next, and he goes, "She goes, anyways, Chris Tellus." He goes, "He goes, hey guys, yes, yeah, so I was raping a racist retard." Right? <laughs> Oh, because he was racist. <laughs> <laughs> and like that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's like I, we can still do. You can still do edgy shit. Yeah. It's just, it's just like yeah. you, you got, like, yeah, you, you got to internalize a little bit. Think to, about it. There has to be a level of wit to it. Yeah. Also, that yeah. was a great tell us. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That was like a really good tell us. <laughs> I lived with tell us for fucking years. I can yeah. do. It. Hey man, uh, <laughs> dude, he used to. So uh, so here's a question now because you're at, so now like I said you're gone. And this is what I'm in, and you're out touring. I think is that probably mostly how you're doing getting your stage time? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so you're out there touring, making boatloads. I mean, boatloads <laughs> yeah. of money. Swimming in it. Swimming in <laughs> it. And my like I'm I'm interested in, in how that came about. And I'm also interested in like what you've learned since touring, because me what you've learned since touring that other people don't realize they don't know. Okay. And okay. so specifically because I went to Amsterdam for a year and I lived there and I was in that scene for a year and I, I'd, I'd only been in Austin scene yeah. and now I'm in this new scene and I was doing my thing and there was, there was different, there was different sort of politics and shit. But at the end of the day, we're all putting, we're all putting chairs in a room facing them in one yeah, direction yeah, yeah. and we're talking to people. So that's what it is. And coming back into Austin, it, it like before, like I came back and I wasn't. There was a period of time before I was all the way submerged back into the scene, so uh -huh. I could see like the edges of it. Yeah, I could look at it from afar. I could see what it is and what it wasn't and what I thought it was when I was in it. And now that I'm out of it, and like I see how like small and cozy of a scene it is. It's not as big of a deal as we yeah. make it out to be. Like we we look at you know cat. There's cap and valve and all these places, and it's like. But then you leave the city and there's a thousand other places. Yeah, dude, yeah. It's such a big <laughs> fucking world with so many things and opportunities to do. Yeah. And we all we, 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 we get sucked into the, the 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 hierarchy of the scene. Where do I fall amongst yeah, other dude, people? Oh man, and, I, and, and and do these these people like me, but do these people we fall into all that. Yep. And when you pull come out of it and come back, you're just like Oh, okay. It's just it's you can just turn the volume down on it all. Yeah. So is there anything like that? with touring yeah yeah no i honestly it did it did help put a lot of things in perspective um like so how it came about was i just uh essentially i uh comic I, I was doing work with i started like doing these 
brewery tours and I was like and he would always post about the brewery tour I thought it was something he was working on and I found out it was like a, there was a company that you know that's that's their entire fucking focus and they started they started booking me it's uh it's it's cool we play a lot of places that I mean I play a lot of big cities I play Seattle I'll do Denver I'll do Milwaukee you know just like you know like uh, New York and Boston and shit but then I'll also do like Holdridge Nebraska or Salina right. Kansas you know what I'm saying and like you're like shit on my next run I'm doing Libby Montana you know like just like you'll do in the middle of fucking nowhere right and one thing you do learn is it does make you like turning the volume down is a good a good experience. It turns the volume down in the Austin scene where you're like, I used to be so caught up in like who said what and what right, was coming yeah. in scene drama, and now it's like, like I I, I got a, a comic that I work with. I don't put him on blast, but he's older than me, but he's only like four years in, and open mic drama is still fascinating to him. Right, and so he'll hit me up like. Hey man, did you hear about what happened with fucking uh, so and so and so? I'm just like, I don't care. No, like, I don't care what did they. You, did you see old girl's blog? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't give a shit, dude. Like, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll humor him. He's the he's, you know, he's the homie, but I'll be like, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. But like, yeah, it turns the volume down. One thing I did notice real quick was that like, like I can do, like I, I so I can do a joke about. To, let's say if I'm doing a crowd like in the middle of you know fucking let's say I'm doing like you know like uh, 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 Alliance Nebraska and I'm doing a, a, a brewery there, they'll laugh at just about anything you have that's well written. They're a lot more likely uh, to laugh at themselves. I've noticed than like inner city crowds are like right. like like in the city like if I go in there and I, I I start making fun of like I don't know fucking people who voted for Hillary or whatever like like they're way less likely to laugh at themselves right. but I can make fun I can talk I can literally do jokes for a conservative crowd I'm like man y'all don't give a shit y'all hate everybody and they're like oh, oh man yeah I do you know like, <laughs> they're that's completely you, cool you. with it yeah and also you I noticed, were just saying the other day yeah 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 I was just saying your that, favorite right? colors you were naming them. <laughs> But I also notice that like there's just so much about like the 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 discourse around current events that just doesn't that it's, it's not that they don't care about it or that they even disagree with it. They just don't know about it. So they, you'll you'll they, take they, like they know about the Oscar slap. Yeah, yeah. They heard about that, right? <laughs> I don't know the big shit. Ooh, that's my that's my big opener right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the Oscar slap. But like, let's say like if for example, if you had a joke about pronouns, now that, whether it's uh, anti pronouns or pro pronouns or whatever the case may be. You'd be surprised. They, they don't speak English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they don't know their phonics. You, well, you'd be surprised at how little, like, they know, they'll, they'll know that they exist. But like, let's say if you're doing a joke that references something that happened in the last six months of the pronoun debate, they just won't know what the fuck you're talking about. They'll be like, yeah. oh, like, I, I, like, they know what they are, but, like, they're, they're not, it's kind of like when you get off Twitter and you realize that, like, half the shit they care about on there, it doesn't affect in the real world. Like, you're like, yeah, yeah like, I'll be like, oh, that person's getting drugged on Twitter. And I'll be like, I mentioned that to somebody, they're like, oh, that person, I like, I like his movies. I'm like, yeah, well, he said the wrong thing about voting rights. And they're like, oh, yeah. I don't care. It's, like, most people don't give a shit. Man. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've, I've learned that from posting my shit recently, yeah. all my little clips and all my little things. And I put a lot of it on YouTube. And the only ones that get any traction are because everyone's hating it. That's the only <laughs> reason why. Everyone just comes in and is like, hey, actually, uh, that's bullshit, and this wasn't even funny, and you dumb. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, fair. Cool, 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 cool. I'm and, glad that and, it's constructive. But the thing is, like, it's all – the most hate I get – Some one guy just wrote, this sucks. He took time out of his day to just write, this sucks. He was like, it was a 45 second uh, clip. Yeah, it's like dust the he, fucking Cheetos <laughs> off his shirt. This, this fucking sucks. <laughs> and you know what? It didn't, sir. It did anyway, not. But Boner Man 69. The <laughs> <laughs> but the the shit that gets the worst is all like the stuff that leans explicitly like liberal or progressive. Y yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. shit that everyone's like, uh, duh, you're dumb. This is dumb. This is stupid. Yeah. You're not even thinking, oh, this is just the, this is yeah. woke. Retardation, yeah. all this shit, and it's like, and it, it, it's like, obviously, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like, well, you're changing my mind. I don't, yeah. I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not like taking what they're saying, but I am like, huh, the world. It turns out Austin really is a bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody gives a shit about that, or, or like, they either don't give a shit with it, or they just like, like, like blatantly don't agree with it. And it's like, it's, it's, it's very, it's strange, man. Like, I, uh, another thing I noticed that that, that is different is the idea that life sucks and it, and it's bad. 
doesn't translate the further you get out. Like, like if I bring it, like, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, like, 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 because like, we, we love it. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can do a joke like, where you're like, I cried in my car last night. <laughs> applause break, and you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, I hate being alive. Yeah, it's like you get out to the middle of the fucking country, and you're like, yeah, you guys know how life fucking sucks. And they're like, what? No, I'm, I'm actually very happy, and I get one night off a week. Could you please tell a joke? You know? <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, dude. I, I, I like the idea that everything sucks and everything's bad. Does it falls yeah. flat on its fucking face yeah. to some of these crowds? I, 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 like I know, I noticed this, and I want, I didn't know, I wanted to write something about it. I don't know what, but like at, I work for like a little progressive sort of company, and um, you know, we'll have we'll have meetings like Zoom meetings. We'll come in. Let's say there's like four or five people. And it's like, you know, it's like, okay, I just want to start off by just checking in, just seeing, like, how everyone's doing. And everyone's answer is the same. They're always like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> And then they all go, they all go, I'm surviving. Yeah. And it's like, bitch, you know how, I know how much money you make. Yeah. We're doing great. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's we like. Li- a- we, we, you probably live in some fancy city yeah, with some yeah. fancy shit, drinking some kombucha yeah. from Trader Joe's, and you're talking about like, I'm making it through. I'm making it through, are yeah. Are you fucking like, kidding me? Yeah, dude, it's like, I, man, I, be, I, I play shows with like cats that like, Afterwards, like they're excited to come up and tell me a, a joke that they heard, and like if, it, if, if it's not racist, it's usually along the lines of like, I go, it's it, like I swear to God, the other guy, the other night, a guy in Kansas told me like eight limericks. <laughs> he was like, he was cool as shit. He was my age, the younger cat. He was like, uh, he was came up. He was like, oh hey man, I got something for you. And it was a toast that you would give, and it was like something like, here's the pussies, may they fit inside of dicks, and this is like, look at these play, and all right, yeah. it was very vulgar, and it was like that was like the height of comedy to my man. Right. He was like, right, and like. I, we were just talking, and they're talking to the guy lived in Garden City, Kansas. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that fucking place, but like he was like, they were like happy. They seemed like they legit like like were enjoying to be at the show. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but it's like I'll do like um, you know, like a, uh, I'll do a show in Austin, and like a girl like like let's go be like, ladies, are we doing okay? <laughs> Are we just getting by? Like, isn't it? And like, I'm not saying and that. Like, I'm not saying that what she's saying is wrong. Right. But it's just the idea that like everything fucking sucks. Yeah. It, 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 you go, go ten minutes outside of the city, and, and you'd be surprised well, how people don't think that. And also, like, even uh, even like as a comic, go outside the city, do that, and realize what the world, like, what the world, and what what how your jokes work, how they operate, what learn, what kind of culture, what kind of ears are listening to your joke, and what culture they come from, and, and yeah, you grow as a comic. But also just as people in a liberal bubble, like go outside and see like if if there's a motherfucker working fucking nine days a week or whatever and like <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, they and, invent and, new days. And, That's yeah, how hard like, I they work. They invent new days and they work in like they sleep in two hours. Well, I, I work Schmerz day. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't link up Schmerz Day. <laughs> I only get one Bagama Day <laughs> off a week, and you telling these shitty ass jokes. Yeah, right. But like, go outside and then see these people who are working way harder than you are, and yeah. they still have joy and love for their life, and they and they take pride in what they do, and they're yeah. not just constantly complaining about yeah. anything. Yeah. It's like, man, there's another half of this country that yeah. has wisdom to share, and a lot of it's racist. And I, listen, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how to reconcile that. Yeah. But you, 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 you'd be you, like one thing that did surprise me is like. Um, you there, you do get people that are like they because especially when I play like small towns like I've I with this brewery tour, like you know, breweries are fucking everywhere now. Yeah. So like we'll play places where like I I, I rolled in town one time. It was it was me and the comic I was working with. They they linked us up with two other comics because we were in the middle of the country. It was the middle of the week instead of one of us not having work. So like we'll just put y'all all in the same show. So we roll into this town and we pull up and we sit out at the fucking diner like two hours before the show. And the guy at the diner walks up and goes. Are you guys the comedians? And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah how'd you know? We're not even performing at this business. Like, we're like, 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 <laughs> and he was like, well, there's about seven people in this town and you guys aren't them. And I know there's a comedy show, but like, in that, I really like in, in small towns like that, like, there's people who are like, really excited to talk to you about politics, sometimes for shitty reasons. Sure. Sometimes we're like, oh, so you're from the city. So you brought, you know, like, they, they want to challenge you and they want to be shitty. But that's actually pretty uncommon compared to people who are like, are kind of like, you start talking to them and they, they they pretty much agree with you on most basic points. Like you're like, yeah, man. Like I I I remember talking to a guy who was like, it was like he's it, it, by his own words, he's like I'm hardcore Republican, but I understand the value of unions and I'm part of the electricians union. And we talked about unions and we ended up talking about how he's like I fucking hate Elon Musk. I was like I hate him too. And it was like we had this like this common ground that yeah. I probably would have never understood or or yeah. figured out. And I think 
and this this comes from my own experience of, of leaving Colleen, Texas and growing up there. And in Colleen, I was probably a weird lefty type, you know? But at the time, when I just moved out of there, uh, and I, I talked about it on the podcast before too, did not have a, an opinion I'm proud of about trans people. I, I, I literally, yeah. had, in my head, had an opinion like, oh, no, they're all just fucking delusional. Had to meet people and go through it and experience it myself to be like, oh, I was wrong yeah. about that. But like, when I left, I used to like, find myself being a little like um people because people they'll talk to you like you're stupid that's that's the first thing it's like oh you're from a small town like you guys are probably you're probably racist or you probably think we should all have guns like like like, like mandatory or whatever it's a weird belief they have about you and whether it's true or not i found myself digging in on talking points that i necessarily agree with i just felt like i was my back was against the wall and i was being considered stupid in a room full of like Austinites and they were like right. oh you're probably kind of dumb or whatever and I found myself doubling down on shit I didn't necessarily agree with just because I felt backed up against the wall by these motherfuckers and didn't want to like give an inch because I didn't respect how they were talking to me right and I, you'll I find that that's something that is pretty common because people are like it's and, and, and again it's it's still like I guess like like you should have you should strive to have the right opinion regardless of circumstances but none of us are perfect and you'd be surprised how many people out there don't necessarily disagree with like progressive ideas in terms of like, you know, labor or pay or like gender equality, things like that. But there's this knee jerk reaction that they're like, everybody outside of this fucking bubble that I'm in thinks I'm fucking stupid. They think I'm backwards. They think I'm a moron and they think they know what's best for me. And so I'm going to dig in and these public discussions and and, and I'm not not saying it's right or it fucking absolves them or or anything, but it's, it is weird that once you start the dialogue and you get to talk to people, you'd be surprised how much you actually agree on versus how much you're digging in when there's like this level of disrespect. Like there's people back home from my hometown that I haven't talked to face to face in years. And our, our interactions are purely adversarial and it's all about like, like, you know, Facebook posts, incendiary Facebook posts, shit that I know in my, in my heart of hearts. I'm like, you didn't post that. I mean, you you agree with that, but you posted it because you want to ruffle some feathers. Like you posted that thing about abortion rights because you knew it was gonna piss off some people you went to church with when you were a kid. And like, I gotta be honest with myself, like right. you knew that's why you were doing that. And now, as a result, this person you grew up with, you used to skateboard with. The only re- way y'all talk to each other anymore is like in all caps, shouting. Because like, right. but but it's like I, I I have to be honest with myself. Like I know what I'm doing. I'm just ruffling feathers. So maybe this guy doesn't necessarily disagree with me. Maybe he just feels like he's being called stupid. And yeah. you you'd be surprised if you get that face to face interaction. Man, yeah. No, I think that's that's super accurate. I think the 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 thing that I'm thinking about is just like you talking to the dude about Elon Musk. Yeah. And being like, oh, we both hate Elon Musk, and it's like. Yeah, because this left and right divide that we have, it's really what's re- what what the divide really is in the country is a class divide. There's yeah. rich people and there's poor people. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. so like you're you're like, hey, trans people are great, and hey, Tyler, stop killing women, and all this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and I'll never get through to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, you, you believe what you believe, right? I mean, listen, yeah. So you're all like that, or whatever. And then, and then, uh, and then, you know, he's he's however he is. But at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, but we're both. I don't got money. You don't yeah, got yeah, money. He don't got yeah, money. This yeah. guy got money. He's doing a lot of bullshit yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. and and affecting people's lives negatively. Yeah. And that's really what the divide is. I would love to see a fucking uh, 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 like like an awakening of class consciousness in this country. I got a, a homeboy it's, back home. There's, what, just, there's just such an effort by the yeah. people in, tr- in charge that, that of keep, yeah, yeah. to keep that to be like, hey, but it's probably the Mexicans, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and I mean, even even that, I mean, right, right. Even though that, even though it's funny, it's like even that is like, well, aren't I falling into the same trap as assuming that these people yeah. hate Mexicans yeah, just yeah, because yeah. they vote a different way than yeah. I do. Like, what is it really? Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's a there's a percentage of them that do, but then yeah. I, I know that I I know in my I know in my head, but it hasn't come down all the way yet that those people that just have different concerns than I do because yeah. they live in a different environment. Yeah, dude. I one thing I'll, I'll say this is what always kind of like makes me laugh. Kind of like where I grew up at in Clean very diverse and like 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 to the point where like i like during the middle of covid uh gonna out myself i snuck away to colleen for a day i went to a cornhole tournament <laughs> i didn't play it i don't really i don't really play that game but these was, comics awful people yeah, yeah, going yeah. to shows in <laughs> april 2020 are you crazy yeah i don't want to be like that dude i stuck I'm out playing cornhole yeah, yeah. I, stuck, I went to a cornhole tournament because i was just like i was like man one thing about quarantine I gotta get some pussy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so this, you go to the car hole. This, 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 no, this nice girl was was willing to drive down to Austin and pick me up because I never car at the time. 
and drive me back to a mutual friend's house who was having a big ass fucking cornhole tournament at their house. And that's where I went and I hung like out for the you day. You want to hold my bing bag? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to hold? You want to hold the other one? Uh, so I go there and like it was. I remember sitting there like, and it was like it was much more diverse than any Austin comedy kickback I'd been doing the last two years. Yeah. It was like, there was like, because it's, 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 it's a more diverse area. There's like people who are like, like a lot of people, like a lot of like, like white Mexican marriages. There's a lot of fucking yeah. just like tons of like way more black people than you'll see at any gathering in Austin, at least in our, like our fucking circle. And like, you know, like so I remember sitting there and being like, Oh man, I'd probably get shit if I fucking somebody fed and I dipped off to this. And I started thinking about just the optics of everything. And I and that's yeah. one thing I noticed. I was like, you know, this Dude. is funny. This is more diverse than any anything I've been to in Austin in the last like year yeah. and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's um yeah, I gotta get out of the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting the fuck out of it. I'm moving. I'm moving in September, but I got Oh, get, where like, were you going? New York. Oh fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. I was, I'll, I'll, I was up there I'll seeing hit, I'll hit up Kath. She, yeah, she never knew me, but yeah. I'll, 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 I'll send you her way, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I was just up there, man. I fucking had a, such a dope night. I did uh, our friend um, Dismukes' show with yeah. with Michael Good. Yeah, I went and saw that show. They couldn't get me on, but I saw that. Yeah, show. dude. It was, it were, you so, with, were you on with any cool people? I was on with Janine Garofalo. I went on right oh, after Janine really? Garofalo. Oh, she opened great. for me. It was. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great. But yeah, it was, it was Martin Urbano's birthday, and he had just got to the, the Tonight Show news. And so oh, they, is he on that? Yeah. Is, aside, he, t- is he taking over for Fallon? No, oh, he's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, right, that's great. Asylum just let us like celebrate his party, his birthday all night, and it was just so, like we we got a contingency out there. You're gonna have a fucking blast, dude. Yeah, yeah, we really do. I mean, like I I already know. Like I I hit him up for the show whenever I went in November. Yeah, and and they were like, oh, we can't get you on, but you, next time, come through next time, we'll get you on. I'm like, that's great. And you know, we got we got good people out there. Yeah, and and none of them are. I feel I feel I feel like I know ones that are at least accessible. Like you know, I never yeah. knew Dismukes, and he and he's nice to me. But yeah. I would never be like, yo, you. So you want to hang? Like, what's yeah. good? Like, I would never because it's like we, you know. And also, yeah. like, I'm sure you know he yeah. gets it all the time. Yeah, yeah, he gets that shit all the time. So, but I feel like I do have people that are. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we got we got a little squad out there, man. Yeah. I, 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 you're gonna do good, man. Yeah, but um, yeah, what? But as far as like, what do you see? You ever see yourself moving? Dude, for the first time ever, I considered moving when i was up there last time Dude, i remember saying, well, I, I, I i googled apartments i started looking at apartment prices and shit and like you know i, I was kind of it was a thing where i had the freedom to it was like i was like oh i i have you know my my chick isn't tied down here like i'm not necessarily tied down like we have jobs but it's not jobs we can't replace you know or or, or you know like I, I can do comedy from anywhere and so i started thinking about it a lot and was like it was the first time i'd ever considered it but at the end of the day i i, I like austin man i love living in texas i'm a bit you know i'm born and raised out here i, I grew up an hour up the fucking road yeah. and there's uh, there's a familiarity here but also it's like the velvet rut you know what i'm saying it's like yep. it's like I, I could i could do this shit velvet coffin I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i could do this shit for 15 more fucking years man and like and then not even real i just wait like wake up one day and be like yeah, what happened? Like, like, yeah. like, I just, I just wasted. I mean, is it a waste? Like now I'm 50 and I can't yeah. move to yeah, New York. Yeah, you can't go anywhere. Now. Yeah. So I, I, I thought about it, man. It's now not, I have my own two kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, it's not outside of the realm of possibility for me, but it was the first time I ever seriously considered it. Was literally was uh, when I was back in in New York this last time, and I was like, eh, "Fuck it, man. Let's start looking at some prices at least." Yeah. And that's farther than I've ever gone. Yeah. Down that rabbit hole. So for what it's worth. I mean, is Austin losing its charm, at least to that degree? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, well, I mean, uh, how do you, whenever you think about your, your your future in comedy, I mean, there's there's a lot of different factors. Like, there's moving, there's there's you got a girl, you got a relationship that, that you like, I guess, and is working. Um, it, it's like, how do you, whenever you, I remember, you know, Jerry McCorkle? Yeah. He told me, he, he, he basically quit comedy. He's might, he might start dabbling again, but he's taking a, a, a hiatus or whatever. And uh, and basically he's like, yo, I'm close to forty. I, I, I like I've I've been working at baristas for the last ten yeah. years as a barista for the last ten years. It's like when you're young, people are like, man, I'm gonna ride this shit till the wheels fall off. And he's like, yeah, mm. wait till they get a little loose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait, yeah, wait feel. till you have no wheels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like wait till you see, wait till they start shaking a yeah. little bit, and then you're like, uh oh. Dude, Where's uh, it gonna yeah. go? So it's like, the, and 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 there's a and like we're saying, be a human first. There's a lot of other things to deal with. Yeah. It's like it's like you know you. I remember I I wrote this down. This is a, it's it's, a, it's funny, but it's sweet too. Where it's like, uh, 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 what did I write? I write I wrote like when you're young, uh, uh, you think uh, you're never gonna let a woman get in the way of your dreams, and hopefully you meet a woman that gives you a new dream. Oh, life with her. Oh, that's dude. That's that's real though. That's real though. Yo, that that is man. It's it's like a fucking um. God, this, this is gonna be the most the, the dumbest comparison I've ever drawn. Uh, I just I just 
went back and rewatched uh, or watched for the first time seasons two and three of Stranger Things. Dude, I'm watching Stranger Things right now. Uh, yeah, 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 I've exactly. never seen it. I watched season one. I'm in season two. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy that yeah, you brought yeah, that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Friends <laughs> okay. don't lie. Friends don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> but like, 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 there's, there's, I'm at an episode right now where like, um, no spoilers. Uh, what was that? No spoilers. Oh yeah, no, no spoilers. But basically, two of the crew have girls, and what, and, and then two of the crew. Well, actually, one of the crew doesn't, and that guy just wants to play D and D one day. And there's a day that he just wants to play D and D, and the two dudes are just like trying to fucking like iron out shit with their girlfriends who are mad right. at them. And he finally is just like, "What well, am I? Can we just fucking play D and D?" And they're like, "Did you always think this is gonna be like this forever? Like we're gonna get girlfriends?" Like da, da, da. he's like, "Yeah, maybe I did." Whatever, but it, but it's like your 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 thing your priorities change, and it's like, and I feel like to quote Richard Pryor, uh, and it's I feel that this can be. Gender neutral and gender swap, but uh, so pussy's good for you, Jack. You know, like, <laughs> like, 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 you have like a yeah, human connection, it'll it'll change yeah. your priorities. Yeah. Where you're like, you're, at first, you're like, I'm gonna do comedy, the fucking wheels fall off, and like, you get a girl, and, you, and, and, you, and, and if you do that long enough, you're gonna become a worse person. Yeah. You're shutting yourself off from good yeah, yeah. opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Human growth just because of this 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 dream that you have, and what is and, and follow your dreams. But yeah. what is the dream if you are excluding? A human existence from happening. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. You don't, you don't want that. I, and I, we, I think we've all met those guys who yeah. are just like locked in on this shit. And it's, it's like, dude, you gotta have something else, man. And like, that's why I'm very thankful that I have like my friends outside of comedy. I'm thankful that I have my girlfriend uh, that I can just drive an hour up the road and I can hang out with dudes who are bored of hearing me talk about comedy because they, they've been there right. since day one. They've been there since the first open mic and they've watched me on Facebook. And I can go back and there's like. 15 minutes where they'll let me talk about like, dude, I'm on the road, I'm doing all these fucking shows. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool, just cool, be cool. Like an excited, like the yeah, excited yeah, and, kid yeah. version. And they'll let yourself. me, they'll yeah. let me get about 15 minutes of that, and then I, I can just see their eyes glaze over. They don't give a shit. Yeah. And I'm so happy that I have that because like, if I didn't have that, I, I, I would only have people who did care about that. And yeah. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> that's all you have. Like, yeah, you got to get a well-rounded life, and yeah. it'll make you start thinking about things where you're like. Well, shit. I, I, I like. I want to move. Like, you're like. I want to move to New York. And that's like not necessarily you, but that's your goal. Like, I want to move to New York. And then you're like, well, hold on. That's like very expensive. That's like, like, what am I really chasing down? And if you have like a relationship or somebody, you know, something else to think about, it puts things in perspective. You're like, well, maybe I could yeah. stay here, do this, and it just allows you to make decisions like a more informed, fucking actual human person. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's important. Like, you can't just be a comic. You got to be a human first. Yeah. I don't know if this is relevant to what you were just saying, but I thought of another Richard Pryor quote where he was <laughs> he was talking about somebody. He was like, "Yeah, he gonna settle down once he finds some pussy that fits." Yeah, <laughs> dude. that fits. Yeah, yeah, that Find fits. Some yeah. pussy that fits. That's so gross. Yeah, man. legend, a legend. Man, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. He was pretty good. Man. Yeah, yeah, he was good. He's good. Pretty good. No, dude, man. The, I, have you ever heard of the the, the drunk dra the, the wino meeting Dracula? No, what is that? It's it's a bit that he does about like uh, how Dracula just be like will show people's windows like floating around and shit. He's like, and they always show you like from the inside from like the person who's being stalked by Dracula. Like, oh no, he's like, what about the person outside? He just sees Dracula floating out. <laughs> he was like, no, that's a just, great bit. It's just a drunk dude. He's like, motherfucker, what you looking at those windows for? <laughs> And he's like, where are you from? What? He's like, Dragon, where's that? He's like, Transylvania. T I don't know, I know what it means, motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, that's such a great yeah. premise. Yeah. It's so, it's so fucking, fucking funny, fucking yeah. Man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're talking about being so committed to comedy that you don't grow. But then also there's the opposite where it's where the, the Velvet Coffin thing. Where yeah. You, where you get so comfortable with your girl and with your, you know, like I'm, you, you know, also know the person in the scene where it's like, hey, I, got a, I got a good job, I got a good girl, I'm, I'm respected in the scene. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what, are you, what is there to do next, you know? You know? I, I got, I got. I, it's, it's a hard thing to balance, like yeah. career growth with, um, still being flexible to yeah. life happening to you. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't want to be that motherfucker that like, you know, like, like, like I, I'm lucky as I go on the road a lot, and I, like this last like six months, I've written like like ten new minutes, that, like 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 good minutes, like like that, that I'm actually using like right. regularly, and that's like like I, I I'm like I, I'll shut it sometimes. Before there was like about two or three years there where I didn't really have anything new, and I was just like. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy who's showing up and you have you're doing the same half hour, the same fifteen minutes. Right. You know, like that's nightmarish. You know, like like when you but it, when it's you don't notice it until it's not, not too late, but you don't notice it until it's already happening. Right. Like you don't notice that you haven't had any new material until you you notice that you don't have any new material and you're right. like, oh shit, I'm not doing anything fresh. I, I feel like I'm bored on stage. Yeah, it's fun, and that's, that's one of those things where like you gotta be like, okay, well, am I in this? Am I out of this? What am I actually doing? And I think you gotta constantly be reevaluating where you're at, what you want, and what you're trying to get accomplished, and because you owe it to yourself. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you, if you're being honest with yourself, you might 
have that fucking you, you might have a, a thought session one day where you're like I actually don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like, it, it, like, and it, it seems scary, like even thinking that. But yeah. like, imagine if that's really what you want, and you come to that realization. That's gonna be fucking fantastic yeah. to be like. I I quit comedy for a day. I <laughs> I I gave my like like I was in my mind. I was so stressed out about this. I would just love your life just advanced by leaps and bounds that day. <laughs> well, the, that's the thing. So it's like I quit. I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit forever. Yeah. Today. Yeah. I'm gonna, just for the next 24 hours, I'm going to think as, I'm going to imagine oh, okay. like I'm quitting. Yeah. And then I just saw my life open up. I yeah. was just like, oh my God, I can go to, I can go to this city, that city. I don't have to go to fucking New York or LA. Yeah, I yeah. Have my brother's in Europe. I could go to Europe and hang out with him for a while. Yeah. I could go, I wouldn't have to, I'm not, I'm not bound to crowds and people. And yeah. I don't have to have this stress and anxiety of like, oh, I'm getting on stage tonight. I feel weird all day, a little bit, sort of, you know. All right, and we're back. Battery died. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what were we talking about? Uh, being being a real you, person or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> some, something, something real profound. Um, I, the last thing I really want to talk about was your podcast. Okay. Um, and 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 you know, you, how long have you been doing that podcast? You've been doing it for years. It's about YG four years now. Yeah, four four years with Cat Bar Barbadaro. <laughs> her last name's like Marlboro, the cigarette. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Why why is there an Ellen? For there? years, I called her Barbadero, and like like I, like like for too long. I, I think you can find some early lie cheat and steal episodes where I go Cat Barbadero, and it's like very clearly Barbadoro. Oh yeah, okay. So, yeah, well, yeah. Bar Barbadoro. Yeah. Um. Uh. And I, and, and like. You know, you're doing this podcast with her. It's a, it's a it's about going over stories of liars, cheaters, and stealers, and and then you also have uh, Vanilla Presley. Yes, which is with you and Lane, where y'all this is your free or your I guess not freestyle. Y'all make y'all write. Yeah, yeah, it's so a you, comedy rap duo. Comedy rap duo, and it's like, how long have you been doing that? That one's been a while, dog. Like uh, that one, shit. Like it's one of those ones. Like I, I kind of always want to think about how long we've been doing it. Uh, it's been like eight years now. Yeah, dude. yeah, and like. I've done things with people for less time. Yeah. And I, because I know how hard it is to find someone that you can actually do a thing with for an extended period of time. Yeah. Like, how have you managed both of these? You know, like, yeah. You, you got two long term things that are going well, that are successful. I mean, I know you're, you're doing the podcast consistently, making a little bit of money off of that. Yeah. I'm not really sure where you are with Vanilla Presley. We, uh, we just opened for fucking MC Chris last yeah, night, two nights ago. Yeah. Y'all yeah. are still doing shit. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's crazy that you've been able to find these people that you're able to work with consistently. Yeah. Because it's hard. I've always been lucky in terms of, like, who I who I like select to work with it. It's not even like I have like a crazy thing. I just like if the vibe is right, the vibe is right. But I don't even notice it's right. I'm just like, oh, I want to work on this and do this thing with this person. I've had projects fall through, but on the other hand, it's like I like so for example, it also works into my dating life somehow. I've I'm I've been I've had three relationships that have lasted for a total of 14 years. <laughs> like, and, uh, okay. I've never been like I, I've never been like oh me and her dated for a few weeks or we dated right. for a few months I never even actually understood that because my first relationship was five oh, it's, years oh, it's easy. yeah, yeah. <laughs> my first oh, one was five years my next one was seven years and now I'm coming up on two years in this one and I'm always in my head I'm like how do you like, like I, I'm like how do you even consider that dating it's like we're like, not even like a, like a, a purist thing of like how, it, it just feels weird to me like it feels like when I look back on that I would be like oh I, I didn't date that person for two months we Fucked and slept in the same house a couple times a week. You know, like that's what yeah. I would feel. It wouldn't could bring but as, that, as dating. That, to yeah, me. but that, well, I mean, there's. But I feel like there's date. I feel like there's dating, and then there's you cross the line in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. What I, feel like. I, yeah, I guess that that's the thing. It's always been just, just relationships, not just dating. You know, serial monogamous. Serial monogamous. Yeah, yeah. With Lane and Kath. Yeah, with Lane and, and Kath. Dude, it, yeah. it just works like that, and it, it kind of comes down to like a philosophy that I have in comedy, uh, or just like like trying to moving in the entertainment industry. Is I call it my arm's length thing. I keep most people at an arm's length in, in this in this biz, and not even like at, like I'm not trying to be like like a dick about it. It's just like one of these things. Like I'll meet comics who are like, oh, I don't like that guy, or I hate that comic, or that guy makes me mad. And it always it weirds me out. I'm like, why? We barely know each other. We hang out right. four nights a week and we tell jokes. It just feels like if you don't like that person. I, I'm like, I, and people, some people call it like my ex would call it fake and dishonest. But like, I'll keep somebody at arm's length because it's like you never know. That person might be booking a show that I need one day. That person so might be. It's not about keeping people not close. It's about letting people come 
but only stay at arm's length, even if, yeah. if they're shitty. If yeah, they're cool, yeah. then you'll give yeah, them Yeah, yeah. If, if they're cool, then, I, then, I, then I'll let them in the, in the inner circle. And so I feel like I've been lucky like to find partners that are good to work with. Also, and this, like, I'm not saying this to brag, but with Vanilla Presley and Lie, Cheat, and Steal, it really helps when the thing is successful. Like, like I, I've, ke- I've kept this going for a while because like, it makes money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so at this point, it's kind of like me and Kath own a small business together. Like, yeah. you know, like, like a very small business. You know, big enough, you know, <laughs> but, like, but still like... You like, know, insecure for no reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a medium-sized business, but... But yeah, it's kind of like we, we own a business together. Like, there's a, there's a payoff every month, and that makes it worth it. Um, like, it is kind of hard to, like... You know, when you're just going for, like... You know, you're, when you're... Um, I don't know, but like when you're, if, if I was doing like if I was Vanilla Presley, for example, like I, I squeezed my fucking TV credit out of Vanilla Presley, and for a long time we had a monthly show where like I could reliably make like two hundred bucks a yeah. month off Vanilla Presley, and like and that was just off that one monthly show. And it's like when there's like when there's financial incentive, it makes it real easy to stick together, yeah. and it also yeah. makes it easy like to 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 weed it out. Like if you're making, if you're doing something that's at least generating some income, and the person you're working with is impossible to work with, you're the the frustration is going to get. To, to boiling point real faster than if there's no skin in the game. Right. If I'm just meeting up with some dude twice a week to write sketches and he flakes on me all the time, it's really easy to be like, all right, man, fuck this shit, you know, and you're out. Whereas, like, if there's, or, or I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm the inverse. It'd be easy for me to keep doing that. If I'm like, okay, well, fuck it, we'll, we'll meet up next week, we'll meet up next week, and it just prolongs it. But, like, if you're, Working on something with somebody and there's money involved and they're fucking dropping the ball. You're it's like, like what the fuck, yeah, man? yeah, you're gonna cut it out real quick. So it's yeah. like I just like was lucky to work with people that are like dedicated and see the value of what we're doing yeah. and, and like and well, it, it makes it a lot easier. That's hard to find, you it, know. Like it I, is. Like yeah. I, had, I had my podcast with Patrick and um it was and we and that and you know the the, the thing about that podcast was like a pure podcast. Like we didn't care, we didn't promote yeah. it really. We didn't care about numbers. Like yeah, we yeah. was just having a good time. And then we got listeners. Like we had yeah. we given like a hundred downloads. Like, or whatever. Dude, motherfucking people like that I, I know from well outside of comedy, like have discovered that podcast dude, like a half dozen times. People like, still like I, I I you know, you can see the analytics. People are still there's still yeah. people listening, which is crazy to me. Hell yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's fucking cool. And it's it sucks that I we, I was too young and stupid that we didn't capitalize on yeah. it. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then I go to, uh, and then I moved to Amsterdam because I had this opportunity. I go to Amsterdam, and that was me. Yeah. And then I come back, and I'm like, "All right, I'm back. You want to keep going?" He's like, "No, nah, man." <laughs> and it's like, fair enough. I was gone for a year, yeah, so yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, e- even that there was, you know, th- there, there's, there's life gets in the way, or there's a disconnect between like, what do you want it to be? What do I want it yeah, to be? Like, I've, yeah. I've had stuff where I'm like, "Hey, let's make this really great," and they're like, "All right, all right," and yeah. it's like, "Well, that's not gonna work." So, I mean, that's why I started doing this alone. Yeah, dude. That's I, wa- I wanted to do podcast with somebody, but I was like, I, 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 I'm moving. Yeah. I can't. I, I'm like, I'd rather just. Why? Well, I, I was like, why well, do a podcast with Pat when I can just steal your essence for an <laughs> hour and a half, and then I get all the glory? Why yeah. would I even do that? Dude, yeah, yeah. It's 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 much more thing I like about comedy. Coming from when I was I was in a band for five years, and like. Trying to get everybody on the same page in a fucking band is like it's it's you're counting on four other people and like that sucked and like there's a lot of times where it just be like frustrating and you got when you got to get to a show you got to get five people to a show yeah. you got all this fucking equipment and when I was like the door guy at Spider House and I used to pay out bands at the end of the night I feel so bad because they'd pack that fucking place out and the door would be like three hundred bucks and I'd be like okay five member band here's your third here's your third here's your third and they would split that among themselves I'm like. You're all going home like thirty five dollars. Yeah. There was a huge fucking audience tonight, and that would just blow my mind. And like, I like, I like the solitary aspect of comedy. The part where that's like, it's like you're moving at your own fucking pace. Yeah. And you know, if you want to take on a partner or work on a partnership with somebody, if you find that person that's also trying to work, it's like it just it's it's it's, it's, yeah. it's a joy. It's a it's a blessing, yeah. man. Like it's tough. I think maybe I attract. The lazy friends. Yeah, so that might be that might be part of it. I'm trying. I'm trying to level up right now. Yeah, and not be that lazy. So I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, kick yeah. Off them motherfuckers. Yeah, but. yeah. It is like that's what we were saying like earlier in the in the podcast about like, like you know like I love the the comedy that is produced by people that don't give a shit and aren't trying. Like I, I genuinely enjoy their creative output, but it's like it's one of those things where it's like. Like, like you're signing like a punk band in the 80s or whatever. You're just like, okay, guys, we have a huge show tonight, and I see you <laughs> yeah. guys are already doing heroin. Okay, you yeah. know, like, like, it's like yeah. it, it is hard to find that balance because like I know people that are ready to work and I'm like, and they, they just suck. You know, yeah. <laughs> like people who are like hard work ethic, ready to rock. What they don't have is talent. You know, like yeah. I, you see that all the time too. And you know, at least at least we got that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
At least we got that, man. Yeah. Well, listen, you said you had to go. So you're doing Lie, Cheat, and Steal the podcast. Yep. You got Vanilla Presley doing shows. You yep. got your own touring going yeah. on. Um, yeah, anything else you want to talk about? Um, let's see. I do, oh, I do a second podcast now. It's uh, it's about uh, I, I, it's with an insanely intelligent and knowledgeable um, horticulturalist. And okay. it's called Good at Plants, Bad at Life. And uh, we just... I, what's it and, about? <laughs> JK. Title's perfect. <laughs> so that's another, that's another one you can check out. That that yeah. one is... Uh, I, I, I more or less just like... This dude I knew was like, well, I want to start a podcast to promote his, his horticulture company. And uh, I was like, well, here's a number. And he's like, okay. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. he's a, yeah, a bit of a company man podcast, but it's really cool. It's fascinating. It's very interesting. Check that one out too. But... Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, just like the lie, cheat, and steal. It's it's about scam artists, and people love that one, man. It's it's if you like true crime, but you're getting you get weirded out about all the murder stuff. Like I like I love murder, true crime. I love a good cold case file yeah. podcast episode, but it gets to be a bit much sometimes. Like how many hours can you listen to about people being found dismembered and shit? Right. So if you like if you if you're a fan of crime, like I am, love the stuff. I can't get enough of it. You know, I love Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah, I love watching it, love committing it, because I'm all in on crime. This one we talk about just you know. Scam artists and shit. That's a pretty cool one. And I'll be on the road, too. You can check me out. Um, go to my, my Twitter. is at P-E-E-Z-Y-T-X, P-E-E-Z-Y-T-X, because I started my Twitter when I thought I was still going to be a rapper. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you never learned how to make a second one. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I know you can do it, but there's a lot of things. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I, I know I can wash my car, too. I haven't done that shit yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah. I, okay, and then lastly, because I realized the whole premise of this is asking advice, and then I'll just have a conversation and be like, well, thanks. Yeah. I never f- fulfilled the promise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, podcast. yeah. So, it, if you're in, how do I give me advice on how to to beat you in the comedy game? <laughs> well, uh, and how do I be better than Pat? So dude, right. it's uh, like, uh, it's all about just like sticking it out, man. Like a lot of my shit has come from just like you know, like like just just like if this is really what you want to do, which I like, I can tell you one of those motherfuckers that you're not one foot in, one foot out. I can tell this is like what you want to do with your life. Just keep doing it, man. Just keep doing it, and eventually, like. If if like if if you weren't good at comedy and I could tell or if you weren't dedicated, there'd be like eight other things to discuss before getting to this point. But I feel that you're fucking talented. I feel like you really want this. Is just keep fucking doing it, man, and keep doing it. And again, don't sacrifice your personhood to do it. But like, really, just stay in the fucking grind. Keep making the decisions that get you closer to the scene or closer to the thing you want to be to. And you'd be surprised. It, it'll start to people will start to catch on. And then uh, and then. Maybe if I, I hurt myself and I take a two, year or two off, then you might catch up. <laughs> <laughs> you nah, motherfucker. Man, just, Listen. Yeah. <laughs> this is Pat Soroyce, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much. But this was a great one. Dude, I had a blast. This, this is a great, is, one. Uh, Thank you so great much. way to spend an afternoon, man. Y'all take it easy. Bye bye.